the second order reaction, we're still taking the same reaction, which is A, reactants goes to products, whatever those products are. So the rate R equals K times the reactant to the second order, squared. Uh, and if we set that order equal to our previous definition, change in A over change in time, or uh, for small infinitesimal changes, dA over dt, this is called the differential rate law for second order. We're not going to use that in this class, um, but it'll help me do this following derivation. For those of you who don't care or don't want to know about calculus, you can zone out for about 30 seconds and do your Sudoku. So, minus k dt equals uh, d a uh, over a squared. Integrate this from 0 to time t. At time 0, we have initial concentration a naught. Time t, you have some concentration a. Uh, integrate that over time. Mi again, minus kt on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, what's the integration of 1 over x squared? Not natural log. Negative whatever it is to the minus 1 power. So uh, that'd be minus 1 over a. Uh, integrated from a to a naught or minus kt equals uh, minus 1 over a uh, plus 1 over a naught. And if I just rearrange that a little bit, uh, I'll put the 1 over a over here, move the kt over to the right hand side so it's positive, make everything positive. Now you can zone back in if you had zoned out and here's your second order integrated rate law. Second order integrated rate law. That's the important one. That's the one we're going to use. So there's now a zero order, a first order, and a second order integrated rate law. You can plot this because this looks just like y equals mx plus b over your high school or junior high algebra equation for a line. So now to get a line, so this kind of looks like y equals 1 over x if you plot it normally, but we want it to look like a line because that will help us the most in gathering data and information. So we're going to plot the reciprocal of a versus time. And what will happen there? We'll get a line, but now with a positive slope. So just like the others, we're going to get a line. So here, the slope just straight up equals k, the rate constant. So now, if you have data, and I ask you, hey, show me that it's second order, you would say, OK, I'm going to plot the reciprocal of the reactant concentration versus time. And if I get a line sloping upwards, it's confirmed in second order. If I want to show it's first order, I need to plot the natural log versus time to get a line sloping downwards. Or if I want to show it's zero order, I plot just the concentration versus time. OK, let's do a little half-life before I summarize that more. So half-life, anybody play the video game half-life? Did you play that? Did you play that? Kind of right. OK, so what you do for half-life, the uh, concentration uh, A goes down to half the initial. That's a basically the definition of half-life, when your concentration is half the initial. So what I'm going to do is use the integrated rate law and sub in. So instead of 1 over a, I'll put 1 over half, a naught, equals minus kt, or plus kt, plus 1 over a naught. 
Okay, so here I just substituted in this equation right there, the integrated rate law. Now, uh, I just do a little bit of solving. Uh, I'm going to multiply by a naught, and uh, you have 2 equals kt a naught uh, plus 1. Uh, let's see, I could subtract 1 from both sides. 1 equals kt a naught, solve for t, t equals 1 over k a naught. And this is not just any t, this is the half-life. So I'm going to put a little subscript half-life there to show that uh, it's, it's not any time, it's the half-life time. Okay, so in your text you might want to write down to look at table 14.5. Oh, there's a question, there's a question. Yes? A naught is the initial concentration. So whatever that is, when you enter the picture. Uh, yeah. So it could be 5 molar, 2 molar, things like that. 